Elon Musk is at it again, cooking up something wildly ambitious because building rockets, electric cars, tunnels, and brain-machine interfaces just wasn't enough. Back in 2014, a study by Navigant Research projected that Tesla's Nevada Gigafactory would consume around 100 megawatts of power by 2018, once fully completed. Giga Nevada never quite reached that milestone, ending up about a third the way there, but it produced enough batteries to power Tesla's entire operation. Then in 2022, it was revealed that Giga Texas was originally designed to house a massive battery storage system to sustain its operations during power outages with 136 megawatts of power, which was constructed in 2023. This factory produces the Model Y, Cybertruck, and its own 4680 batteries. It's Tesla's manufacturing hub. But now Tesla is unveiling something entirely unexpected, a colossal AI data center at the southern extension of Giga Texas named Cortex. This AI behemoth will initially be drawing 130 megawatts of power and is set to expand to over 500 megawatts far exceeding the power required for building Tesla's cars and batteries combined. It's as if Tesla's upgrading its own brain, adding a high-powered frontal cortex to its Giga Texas factory. Critics insist that Tesla is nothing more than a car company, but here we have your average run-of-the-mill car company casually building an AI data center that's bigger than some entire cities. So the question is, what is Tesla truly becoming? Tesla is one of the top buyers in the world of NVIDIA chips according to data compiled in 2023. But 2023 will prove to be a slow year because so far in 2024, Tesla has already doubled whatever compute power they added in 2023 and all previous years combined. And the company plans to continue to grow this exponentially. Elon Musk has said that Giga Texas will house 50,000 NVIDIA H100s for starters, along with 20,000 AI5 computers, which is Tesla's fifth generation in its in-vehicle hardware, and this will be used to train full self-driving as well as the Optimus robot. Tesla has also surprisingly been staying ahead of its compute power projections from last year. They previously reported a smooth exponential growth curve of unit equivalents of NVIDIA A100 chips to help illustrate their plans. However, just in the most recent quarterly report, Tesla switched to using H100s as the metric, which are roughly six times faster than A100s with Tesla's FP8-based architecture that they use. Tesla now shows a more rigid staircase of compute power increases demonstrating more accurately when data centers have and will come online. And I've tried to overlay the graphs here to show how they're keeping up with their projections. This increase in compute power will allow Tesla to move faster and to train larger and more powerful models, which is fairly significant given that all of their progress made to date was done with a much smaller base of compute power. Elon Musk also just announced on Tesla's second quarter earnings call that they'll be doubling down on Dojo, which is Tesla's in-house chip. This is interesting news because it seemed like Elon Musk was always on the fence about allocating resources to Dojo. Tesla is perfectly happy buying chips from Nvidia and essentially doesn't need to waste resources to reinvent the wheel. Early on in the Dojo project, Elon Musk waited for his team to express their interest in Dojo before committing to its development. However, recently, Elon Musk has been concerned about getting enough chips, and since Nvidia's demand is so high, he believes Nvidia will be raising prices as well. So Tesla will now be putting more effort into Dojo, and the company sees a path on it being competitive with Nvidia, internal to the company. It only makes sense for them to work on Dojo if it adds some value beyond buying NVIDIA chips. This also brings us to Elon Musk's newfound debacle with Senator Elizabeth Warren, who decided to send Tesla's chair a 10-page letter on why she's upset with how Elon Musk is allocating resources between his companies. 
This ongoing spat started in early June, with Elon Musk telling NVIDIA to divert a shipment of $500 million worth of GPUs from Tesla to XAI, which is Elon Musk's AI startup. If Tesla is short on chips, how does this make any sense? Of course, this is a huge concern for Elizabeth Warren, who always had Tesla and its shareholders' best interests at heart and has taken a great deal of time to write a letter and never hesitates to insert herself into the internal affairs of this specific public company. One of the great things about Elon Musk's portfolio of companies is that they help each other out. For instance, in the past, SpaceX has provided equipment and expertise to help Tesla debug vehicle issues, which saved eight hours per car. The companies share a materials division, which is why Cybertruck uses space-grade stainless steel. SpaceX and Elon's The Boring Company also use motors and batteries made by Tesla. The Boring Company recently dug a large hole at Giga Texas to help with Cybertruck output. See, each of these companies have some sort of expertise, and Elon can leverage this to get whatever job done faster, which is really what's most important. It's up to the accounting division to figure out who pays who to keep everything in check, but their goal is essentially to remove friction away from the engineers at Tesla. Elon Musk decided that it was more important for XAI to get the NVIDIA GPUs at that time. The reason is because Tesla's Giga Texas expansion wasn't built yet, and so there was no point in delivering GPUs for them to just sit in a warehouse at Tesla, while XAI also sits around and waits. It clearly makes sense to give the current shipment to XAI and have Tesla wait for the next shipment, which will likely arrive closer to when the construction of the data center to house these chips was ready anyways. Senator Karen accused Elon and the board of not upholding their fiduciary duty, doing what's right for the company. This is untrue, however, and Elizabeth Warren is actually just trying to add more bureaucracy and doing her best to slow Elon Musk and Tesla down. If she knew anything about business, she would know that storing tens of thousands of server-sized chips in a warehouse is extremely expensive, not to mention transporting them to some other location for them to sit there for a few months and then back to where they needed to go. Elon's decision to divert to XAI actually saves Tesla money. Also, XAI ultimately pays for its own chips and Tesla pays for its own. Secondly, XAI was able to install these chips at their Memphis facility and get training going on them within 19 days, which is the fastest that anyone has ever gotten a supercomputer to train, according to Elon Musk. Now Tesla will benefit once more because XAI will take their learnings and pass them on to Tesla to help Tesla ramp up more quickly when their chips come in. It's truly a win-win for all companies and a major cross-pollination advantage that should be encouraged in the country. There's also this interesting proposal if Tesla should invest $5 billion into XAI. I think this is a good idea, especially since XAI is a private company and it's almost impossible for most investors to get a stake in it. If it was public, this would be a different matter since investors could just make their own personal decision and buy the company's shares. It's also somewhat strange that Elon Musk is asking for permission from shareholders to invest $5 billion into XAI. Any other large company could make an investment of this size without any problem. But in this particular case, it makes sense because it's Elon's other company, and he doesn't want any more issues like he's had with SolarCity, for instance. XAI is a play on very smart engineers tackling difficult AI problems, and this company will also be very beneficial to Tesla. Elon Musk has mentioned that certain talented engineers who didn't want to work on Tesla's problems and want to go to outfits like OpenAI or Google to work on artificial general intelligence or AGI systems have instead been intercepted by XAI, which in a sense keeps the talent within Elon's ecosystem. The companies help each other out, so these smart people can always still contribute back to Tesla or SpaceX or other of Elon's companies if they have an idea. And they're already familiar with Tesla because that's where they're coming from. But in the near future, it's highly likely that Tesla and XAI will have a much closer relationship. Tesla focuses its AI efforts on real-world problems, like vehicle vision and control for FSD, its autonomous driving product, 
that has the opportunity to greatly increase the utilization of electric cars, or for Optimus's humanoid robot Vision, in order to navigate the real world and become useful doing tasks, say within a factory setting, which might allow it to help build cars faster or even more Optimus bots. XAI, on the other hand, is centered around AI, but doesn't really step on Tesla's toes. The field is very wide, and XAI has a mission of understanding the universe. While there is some overlap, this is outside the scope of what Tesla should be working on. Tesla needs to solve machine vision, not training a chatbot to summarize the news or generate cool images. So these are two very different companies and justifies why XAI should not have been started inside of Tesla. If anything, it's more of a direct competitor to OpenAI, which was also started by Elon as a separate entity. No one seemed to have any problem with that. The fact is that XAI will still be a great company and a $5 billion investment at least gives Tesla investors some exposure to its potential future upside. This starts with XAI's most popular product, which is Grok, which appears as a chatbot on X.com, but it's a large language model that employs state-of-the-art reasoning capabilities. During Tesla's most recent conference call, Elon Musk stated that there are opportunities to integrate Grok into Tesla software. This is how the two companies will work together by leveraging XAI's language understanding capabilities, something that Tesla shouldn't really have to think about in terms of implementing and training these sort of models, but then applying it to the in-vehicle experience and then to the Optimus robot experience, at least for starters. Currently, Tesla uses some basic natural language processing within its vehicles in terms of voice commands. You can tell the Tesla to turn on the wipers or open butthole or to navigate somewhere, and the system looks for certain keywords to get the user's intent in order to control an aspect of the vehicle. But if you say the wrong synonym or a more complex sentence, it won't understand what you're talking about. And the current system is also quite limited. It can't answer questions that have nothing to do with your car, like an Amazon Alexa can do, such as tell me the forecast for today, what time is it, set a timer, etc. There's no connection to a system or a function that can handle that type of request. But Grok inside Tesla can take this to the next level. It would essentially be like giving a car a frontal cortex. Grok can go out to the internet and get the news, answer questions, and essentially make the entire driving experience more personable, which will add tremendous value for passengers. Instead of just looking for keywords, you can have a conversation, even allowing visuals to pop up on screen. It's essentially taking smart assistants we've seen in movies and bringing them into the actual vehicle. Tesla's Chinese competitor Neo was one of the first to bring a digital assistant into the car, and Grok can do the same. In terms of controlling aspects of the vehicle, it's still a real-time system, and so it needs to be implemented very thoughtfully, like saying slam on the brakes by accident or go drive off that cliff should at least be run through the full self-driving software to make sure the decision is still safe. But in a world with self-driving autonomous vehicles, a system like Grok becomes a necessity and needs to be highly integrated into the car. For instance, telling the system to get off at the next exit, or to turn left here to slow down a bit, are all things that you could tell a human driver who then processes the command to decide if it's indeed safe to take the action. I actually found it interesting in one scenario with FSD, the car was planning to drive straight down the road and I decided to signal to the right and amazingly, the car made a quick right turn and rerouted to my destination. That sort of blew my mind and using voice commands would take that functionality up a notch in terms of the user experience. For FSD, it would make it into a true robo-taxi. So as Tesla continues to blur the lines between traditional automotive manufacturing and cutting-edge AI development, it's clear that the company is evolving into something far more complex than a mere auto manufacturer. With the introduction of Cortex and the integration of Grok, Tesla is setting the stage for a future where AI is not just an online chatbot or buzzword, but a fundamental aspect of the company's end-user products. So how do you think the introduction of Cortex will impact Tesla's identity as a company? And in what ways could Grok transform the Tesla experience and what new revenue streams might it unlock? Don't forget to watch my last video on GM, Ford, and Ram failing to catch Cybertruck. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we'd really appreciate that. 
And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.